John Constantine wakes up to the sweet sounds of his lover's voice reminding him to remember her. John stares at Satana, confused about what she's talking about while she reminds him to remember that she loves him. He, of course, is confused about how there was ever a doubt in his mind that he loves her. Satana turns in his arms and locks eyes with him lovingly. But before they are about to share an intimate kiss, the sound of Batman's demanding voice can be heard over the alarm system calling every member of the Justice League to the hangar. After the members of the Justice League have convened in the hangar, Superman begins to brief them about their next threat. He presses a button on a control panel and an image of a lava-ridden, industrial planet occurs. Apocalypse, the planet that is home to Darkseid, a powerful enemy that had already tried to invade and control Earth twice. Superman reminds them of the first invasion that led to the formation of the Justice League as well as the second that was caused by one of their own. Raven feels some kind of pain in her head and begins to seemingly silence herself before going back to pay attention to the briefing. After a couple more inquiries from the other members, they officially begin their attack on Apocalypse. However, they are unaware of the prying stealth drone that is sending all of this information to Darkseid, ultimately rendering their plan completely useless. Using Cyborg's ability to create an interdimensional portal, they fly their three jets through and end up on the dreary planet that is Apocalypse. They fly over lava pits that create fire geysers, shooting amber flames into the air contrasting the cool metal on the ground that makes the entire planet look like an active quarry. As the heroes get closer to Darkseid's lair, Batman announces that they are picking up traces of lifeforms coming right at them. They look off into the distance to see a group of something coming their way like a swarm of bees, fast and mean. After a couple of seconds, they acknowledge that these creatures are too big to be regular parademons as they approach them faster. John senses the impending danger and curses right as a giant winged creature smashes through the windshield of the jet and everything goes black. Two years later, we are met with the sight of a post-apocalyptic London. The London Eye is starting to sink into the river as almost every bridge from one side to the other has been destroyed. Through the waste, fire, and decay of what Earth used to be John is found drinking away his grief in a pub with his equally as depressed partner, Etrigan, a large orc-looking, fire-breathing drunk. Their pity party is interrupted by a now powerless Clark Kent and an emaciated and weak raven. Not very long into their conversation, two parademons appear to fight the exhausted heroes. Raven is once again out of commission due to the pain and whispering she keeps hearing in her head. John uses his magic to cast spells and take out a parademon while asking Clark for help, but he is unable to do so. In the midst of all this, Etrigan downs the rest of his ale and breathes fire toward a parademon rendering him deceased without even breaking a sweat. John finishes off the last one with a bright green explosion of magic, leaving the creature as a pile of ash. Instead of arguing or walking away, he brings them to the inner workings of a now-fallen Big Ben where he and Etrigan have set up camp. The two desperate heroes recall their attempted attack on Apocalypse and fill John in on what occurred after he ran away from Zatanna as she was being eliminated by the giant creatures that ended up being half Parademon and half Doomsday. They inform him of every gruesome passing that their fellow teammates had met, except a couple who Darkseid tortured separately. Superman was tattooed with liquid kryptonite ultimately rendering him useless in any extreme fight, and Batman is now Darkseid's right-hand man after some clever mind wiping. These were just some of the disturbing fates of the heroes. They decide that they are going to need more help and ask John to use a locator spell to find Damian Wade. After some quick fiddling, they find out he is somewhere in Asia and Raven transports all of them there in a flash. When they arrive, Lady Shiva and her fellow assassins attack them only to be stopped by Damien before the fight can get too serious. He allows them in while only really being excited to see Raven, and brings them to a cell in a stone corridor. They peer in, and see a psychotic Nightwing wearing a straitjacket. Robin explains to his former teammates that he had hoped to bring his friend back from the eternal sleep, but it didn't fully work. They quickly discuss the next steps that need to be taken and it's time for Clark to step up and inform them of his plan that is already in progress. They travel back to Metropolis and enter what appears to be an empty building, but the inside is lined with villain after villain. There is a boxing ring in the middle where the heroes can now see Lois Lane fighting with Harley Quinn. Lois manages to beat Harley and the clown, who is now the leader of the Suicide Squad, agrees to help them defeat Darkseid. They convene to go over the plan while Robin takes Raven somewhere to rest. We learn that her father, Trigon, is imprisoned inside of her and is continuously trying to escape. Robin claims he won't let anything happen to her because he knows that she's strong enough to keep the god at bay. They join the others and learn of Lois' plan to infiltrate LexCorp and destroy the Boom Tube. This funny named tube is what allows the parademons to travel to and from Apocalypse and if they destroy they'd have no way back and forth. All while this is occurring, three giant metal devices, Reapers, have planted themselves in the earth and have begun harvesting the molten lava from the core to send back to Apocalypse. Lois believes that if they send two teams to attack two of them, it will distract the parademons and give them enough time to infiltrate LexCorp and conduct their plan. 
While this is happening, a small team travels to Apocalypse to destroy the planet's internal generator. They would have just enough time to do so because Darkseid would be off-world attempting to take over yet another planet. Robin is suspicious of how Lois got all of this information and she informs him that she has been talking to someone on the inside known as Sleeper. Even though he believes this all to be a trap, they continue with their scheme. They enact their plan, but they are still lacking muscle and the two Reapers being attacked are not enough of a distraction. John announces that he'll take care of it and Astral projects himself to the third Reaper. Almost immediately, a marsh-like monster that he so pleasantly calls Swampy appears and John convinces him to destroy the third Reaper. When he returns to his body and the team, the distractions work and they can now enter Lex Corp. After a pretty intense fight that Harley enjoyed too much, the teammates their way to Lex Luthor's office with only some minor casualties. Luthor tries to fight back in some kind of mech suit, but he's quickly defeated. He then reveals that he was the sleeper and agrees to officially help them with their plan. After he equips them with weapons infused with kryptonite, Robin, Superman, Raven, John, and Etrigan make the jump to Apocalypse while the Suicide Squad stays behind with Luther and Lois. They arrive on the molten planet and John makes them invisible with a quick spell. The heroes almost get to the entrance of Darkseid's lair, but are stopped by four semi-familiar faces. Mira, Starfire, Martian Manhunter, Hawkman, and Wonder Woman, now all half-cyborg and brainwashed, appear to stop them from entering the building. They begin fighting, losing a Trigon in the process, but John can reverse the brainwashing on Diana and she begins to fight her former teammates to let the others continue their plan. Inside, instead of finding a real generator, they find Flash being forced to run on a treadmill to power the entire planet. They help him down and continue into Darkseid's throne room where they find Cyborg infused to a wall controlling everything for his new master. Constantine reverses his brainwashing, which also reverses the minds of the Cyborg heroes fighting Diana outside. They try to find a weak spot to continue their plan, but are stopped when Batman and Darkseid appear. Batman berates his son Robin in every way possible from calling his mother a whore to saying he never wanted him. As he is about to eliminate his son, Bruce has a flashback to his parents' passing, and his brainwashing is gone. Darkseid then tries to eliminate the billionaire, but Robin steps in taking the blow for his father. Back in Metropolis, the Suicide Squad and the others are being cornered and overrun by parademons. Members of the squad begin to die and the team on Apocalypse isn't doing much better. Raven feels that her father is about to escape. She tells John and he does a spell to free him but gives him the option of being trapped in him instead. The god scoffs and enters Superman's body and before Constantine can fix it, his neck is snapped and he's dropped onto the floor like a ragdoll. Trigon gains control of the Kryptonian's body and begins to fight Darkseid himself. While Batman is saying his final goodbyes to his dying son, there is an incoming call from Lois Lane for Superman. He has Cyborg display it for Clark and he can fight through Trigon's control to say goodbye to his wife before the boom tube at LexCorp explodes. The loss of his love causes him to overpower the god, expel him from his body, and gain his full powers as Superman again. Darkseid manages to trap Trigon before Superman comes in to absolutely rock him. We are brought back to John, who is waking up in a field with Satana standing above him. He makes a joke about being in heaven and she begins to apologize for using a spell on him. Batman had her enchant John as a fail-safe where she died. His immediate reaction would be to flee giving them a second chance to win. The magician laughs bitterly, only upset with Batman, but is ready to spend eternity with his love. That bubble is quickly burst as she brings him back to life instead. He wakes up on the floor with Batman above him and gets back into the fight. He releases Trigon as a distraction to fight Darkseid so Superman and the rest of them can flee. Raven has somehow successfully resurrected Robin and the robot team members have appeared carrying Flash just in time to leave. Cyborg opens one last portal for them to travel through and says his goodbyes to his friends. Raven also says her goodbyes to her father and is the last to enter the portal before the planet is destroyed. Back on Earth at the rubble of the Justice League's building, Batman informs the team that too much of the Earth's core was harvested, and it won't be long before it either freezes or burns. John approaches Flash and says that he knows he has gone run back in time before and prompts him to do so again to reset the timeline. The speedster agrees, and without a word sprints into the horizon as the team watches a bright light approach them. Hopefully, the reset worked. 